Hey guys, my name is Ishan and I am a current GCSE student going into year 12 in summer holiday filming this video. And this video is basically about things I wish I knew before going into year 11. So as you may know, I have just finished year 11 and it was one hell of an experience that I will probably never ever forget. And there are so many things that you might be unaware of before going into year 11 and I'm going to outline them for you throughout this video. So this video is basically aimed for year 10s going into year 11, but of course if you are in year 9 going into year 10 or year 11 going into year 12 or year 12 going into 13, feel free to watch this because it would help my channel and just excuse the tan that I have um, gotten from DOV. The first thing thrown at me in year 11 were definitely all of the opportunities that I had. For example, I was thrown into Duke of Edinburgh Gold Award or CCF. Well, actually CCF started in year 9, but let's forget about that. I absolutely hated it. So let's talk about Duke of Edinburgh Gold Award. So this is basically an award that shows you have commitment, um, commitment skills, leadership skills, uh, because basically you have to do five sections. One is the expedition, which I did like a week ago, which was horrible, it, but it's really good. It's uh, really good on CV. I also have to do residential skill, physical and volunteering over a long, long period of time, which I'm not looking forward to, but again, it's great for the CV. So definitely take on board all of these opportunities you will have. I also had CCF, but that was absolutely horrible. Never liked it, it was just too physical for me and never doing it again. Other ones that were thrown at me were critical thinking courses, English enrichment courses, which again, you can put on your CV, you can put it on your personal statement, whatever you want, but all of this will help you get a job, get into university, and I'd really recommend immersing yourself in all of the opportunities that your school gives you. The second thing that is going to be thrown at you in year 11 are your mock exams. And your mock exams are basically exams you have just before your GCSEs. I think your school might have them either in July, not sorry, not July, in uh, January or October. Mine were in January, but they were actually in March because of COVID, etc. And now I'm going to stress this. Mocks are so important. Um, because you want to do the work for your GCSEs. You don't want to just mess up in your mocks and have a lot of work to do after your mocks for your GCSEs. So what you should do is revise for your mocks. Whatever you do, revise for your mocks as if they are the real GCSEs. Now, by doing this, you would ensure that you know all of the content for your mocks and you would already know basically three quarters of the content before your actual GCSE. So you won't have to revise as much as everyone else will. Um, and it will just be a much less stressful time during the GCSEs. Now, the third thing isn't something that you might get. You might feel it at the beginning, but it's something I'm going to de debunk. Now, you might all be thinking that you have so much work to do. You're gonna be given homework every single day. You're gonna to have to work every single day for four hours a day. But I'm going to debunk that myth and that is not true at all. Um, to be honest, in terms of homework, I don't even think I got much homework. Uh, I maybe got like 20 minutes of homework a day, which I probably wouldn't even consider homework because I never even did it at home. It's just so easy that I just never did it. Of course, this depends on what subjects you're taking. For example, if you're doing uh, food tech, you might have to do all of the food tech practical stuff at home, uh, whereas I did more of the academic route and it wasn't that bad I'm it w there wasn't much homework to do but in terms of content you don't learn as much as you would in year 10 so I think I learned more in year 10 than I did in year 11 and year 9 combined year 11 is just a year of reviewing all of the stuff that you learned in year 10 and year 9 and just regurgitating it into a past paper. So in year 11, you won't need to learn as much content. You'll just have to apply this content into past papers and scenarios. Um, for example, I had learned most of the content in year 10 and year 11 was pretty much a breeze for me because I'd learned everything. It was just the past papers that, and the actual GCSEs that were a little bit stressful, but not too stressful. Now, the fourth thing, the most important thing that will be thrown at you um, during year 11 is of course your GCSE exam. Now yes you might all be worried about taking your GCSEs but trust me it's not as hard as it seems. Once you're in the exam hall all of the fear just goes away and you basically just concentrate on the paper that you're sitting. I know this because before an exam I was terrified once you get into the exam hall and actually start the exam 
your fears disappear and your head is basically just just into the paper. Now to practice for your GCSEs, what you want to do is start early. Don't start late like everyone else. I'm going to tell you to start early. By doing this, you would have learned all of the content before the GCSEs and you'd be able to do tons of past papers. Now do tons of past papers, whatever you do, just loads of past papers will say year 11. So start revising early and thank yourself later because Starting early was just amazing for me. I was stress-free throughout the whole of year 11 and I don't think I did really get stressed. One important thing, which is number five in our list, is your work-life balance. You can't be doing work every single hour of the day and not be relaxing. This is extremely unhealthy and you need to find a better revision method, which is much more efficient for you. For example, during the exam weeks, um, or the weeks leading up to exams, I did eight hours a day. And this was at my peak performance. It wasn't like I've, I've been doing this every single day because of course not, I would be absolutely dead by now. So what you want to do is find effective ways to revise that minimize the amount of time that you're revising. And the key to succeeding in year 11 is having that balance, whether you want to relax, whether you want to revise, whether you want to go out with friends, I had all of the time to do that as well as revision. Of course, you can have some lazy days. For example, I just sat at home for maybe like three days in a row and did nothing, did no work. Obviously that is fine. And I'm not telling you not to do that because everybody needs that. And I'm telling you, we all have lazy days. But when it gets too much, maybe like two weeks or something, then you might need to try something else because you don't want to be behind. You don't want to fall behind. You want to stay on track of your things maybe get a progress task planner thing or a to-do list, tick things off, but I really do recommend keep on track of your task and get a healthy work-life balance. Now, the last thing which is so important in year 11 is finding resources online and just get ahead. So a lot of people have been asking me on Instagram, where do you get your notes? How do you make your notes? Where do you get past papers? This is something that Tons of year 11s have been asking me before their exams and this is really bad. You need to know where to find your resources, where to find your past papers. There are so many places where you can find past papers. They're basically just scattered all over the internet. Physics and Maths Tutor, GetRevising.co.uk, Save My Exams, Dynamic Papers. There are so many places that provide free notes, free past papers, free everything and you want to use this to your advantage to succeed in your exams. There are also places doing free mind maps, for example, getrevising.co.uk, where students basically share their notes for everybody to use. And you want to use these and use them to your advantage. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. It really does mean a lot that you stayed until the end. We recently just got monetized on YouTube. So that's a big win for me. So thank you so much for supporting this channel. Channel, Thank you so much for getting me to 3000 subscribers, which is practically mind-blowing especially for youtube but anyways if you haven't please go subscribe please go follow my instagram and have a great day good luck in all of your mocks that you're doing if you're doing mocks if i upload this i don't know when i'm uploading this i'm probably gonna upload this in august even though i'm filming this in june i'm not too sure but good luck in your next year good luck in september you're going to do great have a great day see you soon in my next upload